Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 744. Hey, if you want to download the Sorker Book Excel Magic Trick 740 to 752, click on the link directly below the video and scroll down to the Excel Magic Trick section. Wow, this video right here is going to be a comprehensive video on how to create a table of formulas and a chart for break even analysis. Now I have done a, three other videos, four other videos on this, but never a comprehensive one that shows you the tables, uh, the charts, and the trick for charting the actual point on the chart for break even. All right. Um, we're going to build a table, and it's all going to be formulas based on these inputs. And then we're going to um, the build a chart, an XY scatter that will plot it quite nicely. And then we'll um, actually create a dynamic data point and label for the break-even point. Now break-even analysis. It's going to show us, here's the end result. Here's our goal here. right? We want to be able to see our fixed costs. Those are the costs which we cannot cannot change over a certain period of time. Our total costs, which of course total costs start at fixed and go up based on variable cost input. So as you increase the number of units produced, your variable cost goes up. Here are your sales. Sales dollars in start at zero, but as soon as we start uh, selling more, our revenue or our sales revenues goes up. And at some point, there's a point at which they cross, and that's the break even point. And right here, there is the uh, dynamic um, point at which the break even actually occurs. All right, let's come back over here. And first, we want to build uh, our units here. So over here, we had a 0 to 700, but we want that to be dynamic. So we're going to say equals the start units are there, equals this plus this increment, and then lock it using the F4 key. Now, that's hard to see right there. You can see right here, it's uh, I hit the F4 key to lock it, so that's it's locked on that right there. Control Enter puts the formula in the cell, it keeps the cell selected, and then copy it down. That way, the advantage of this method is we could start right at 500 and go to uh, you know increments of whatever, and it works just fine. Control Z Z. Sales. Variable cost are our next columns we need to complete. And the way it works is we're simply going to take, hey, the unit price times our unit sold for sales. That's like the shoe cost $100 price tag. And then our variable cost, we're going to take, oh yeah, the variable cost per unit times the number of units. Variable cost is like the amount the store paid for the shoe. Sales 100, variable cost uh, 50 bucks, right? Variable costs are just the costs that increase as the number of units uh, increase, produced. The number of units produced increases. All right, our formula, notice both of these cells we're going to use units. Boop, boop. And notice that these are horizontal just like these are. So let's think about this formula carefully. I want to be able to create one formula and copy it down and over. So equals that units right here. Now think about this. When we copy it over this column, we need it locked on 0. But when we copy it down, we need it to move to the 70. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Column reference locked, but not the row reference. And I'm going to multiply it times the unit price. The opposite situation is here. When I copy it from the sales column over to here, I need it to that little dancing ants to move, right? So no dollar sign in front of the D. But when I copy it down, I definitely need it to lock because I don't want this to move down. So I'm going to hit F4 twice. Control Enter. I'm going to drag it over and double click and send it down. Double click this column right here. Looks like, um, you know what? We That's formatting. I'm going to Control Z on that. I'm going to highlight all these. It do, don't, doesn't look like we have any pennies. and it, uh, the, this is all estimates, so the pennies don't really matter. I'm going to decrease decimal. Boop, boop. Maybe I'm going to have to do that to the rest of this table, too, if it's pre-formatted. I'll, I'll deal with that later. All right, so now we have those two columns. Now, contribution margin, what is that? Sales minus variable cost. Hey, that means contribution margin. How much do we have left over to pay our fixed costs that have to be paid no matter what? Fixed cost over a certain number, period of time has to be paid even if we sell zero. 
All right, so our contribution margin is going to be equals the sales minus the variable cost. Those are relative cell references. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, uh, contribution margin, as long as we have some positive left over, it's probably good to continue uh, to cover our fixed costs, although there are other variables that go into making that decision. All right, fixed cost, it's the same uh, over any number of units, so I'm going to say equals, and there's our fixed cost. F4 key to lock it, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, I'm going to click here, go up to here, click on that once, and very carefully, you can see that paintbrush, I'm going to highlight and uh, the whole column there. All right, total cost equals SUM, this, comma, this. Variable costs and fixed costs. Actually, you don't need to do it some. You could do that right there, or you can, I'm going to click Escape, or you can simply do this plus this, whichever one you like. Variable costs, fixed costs. Double click and send it down. These light colored blue ones are the ones, the columns we will plot, but I'm going to continue on here even though it's not going to be included in the chart. The net income, whatever contribution margin right there, minus our fixed. You could also do sales minus total cost. In fact, you know, if you're not sure what you're doing, you always want to check it. That way you can see, oh, okay, it looks like I'm on target. I could even double click and send this down. Broop. Looks like either formula will work just fine. I'll put a check right there. Now, if you were printing this out or doing something like that, you wouldn't want to leave that there. Or you'd, if you're printing this out, you could set print area, right? The advantage to set print area, or maybe you have more than this. Yeah, that would be the little table. Set print area would eliminate all of this other stuff that you don't want. You're using all this for your calculations, but you don't need it in your uh, print area. Set print area. All right, now we can plot. Now one awesome, th this is going to be an XY scatter. One awesome thing about XY scatter, if you have your X to the left, then you can plot as many other Ys as you want. And you don't, they don't have to be next to each other. So watch this. I'm going to highlight this. The X is right there. Cool. Hold Control to highlight these other columns. Now for this, you definitely want the labels at the top and the numbers below because these labels will come in handy. That's the name of this data series, and it can be used in the legend. All right, now I go up to Insert, Scatter. Now I'm going to do lines. These are. Uh, predictable increments of 70, so we're never going to get any kind of haphazard pattern here, so I'm just going to switch to the line. And there it is. We have, and there's our um, uh, legend right there. Why don't we add, we've got to do a bunch of things to this chart. You don't want to leave a XY scatter here without labeling, unless it's completely obvious, like a date or something. But XY, no, not a date. but if, unless it's totally obvious, you want to definitely add a label. So I'm going to add a label, because what's down here? Units. I'm going to go up to Layout, Axis Titles, not Axis, that deals with the Axis, Axis Titles, Vertical, right? And the vertical is kind of obvious. We don't, I don't think we're going to need that one here, because we got that there, dollars, and then these lines tell us which type of dollars we're talking about. So we can leave that one out. That's an example of when it's pretty obvious. So I'm going to go down to horizontal, below, and I definitely want units. Now I'm going to be sneaky here. I'm going to click up in the formula bar as long as that's highlighted. Type equals, and then click on the units. It would have been just as easy to type units, but enter, and we have a formula link in that. If we were to change this, it would, it would update. All right, now how about uh, this? Click. Control 1 to open up Format uh, Legend, and I'm going to say put it at the top. You could also could have gone to Layout and Legend. We also want a title. I'm going to go uh, Axis Title. I'm sorry, Chart, not, not Axis, Chart above. I'm just going to say um, if I can type Break Even. Uh, now. I'm a terrible typer. I have no idea whether that word is spelled correctly. Unless I have a red squiggly under it, I'm going to hit Enter. 
I'm sure that's not... Oh, I can hit F7. It says it's spelled correctly. Oh, well, that shows you how much I know about spelling. Okay, it's looking pretty good here. Um, we could even extend this a little bit, get a little bit more spread in the data. Now, the, the tricky part, and pretty much for 90 you know, 95, 99% of the people who are going to do this, you're done right here. But let's get a little tricky here. Now, the tricky part is not going to be the uh, formulas we do here to create the break-even units and the break-even sales. Uh, the tricky part is understanding how an XY scatter chart works. Notice when we plotted these units over here, we had a bunch of X values and it plotted them there. I mean, it, this line got plotted, right? Uh, similarly, we had a bunch of Ys. But the break-even point just involves 1x and 1y. So all we're going to do is we're going to create that 1x and 1y. And we're going to add it to our chart, even though this chart usually wants a bunch of x's and y's. No problem. We will add it. There may be some formatting problem, but we'll format it. And it will show up exactly at the break-even point. Now, break-even point. Well, what do we know about the break-even point? Net income is 0. And here's our formula, units times the gross profit per unit, which is the sell price minus the variable cost. So for us, it would be 50 minus 35, so 15 bucks times the unit minus all the fixed costs, right? Well, you can solve uh, for units. I'm going to add fixed cost to both sides, and I'm left with this. And then I'm going to divide both sides by S minus VC, and I'm left with, that comes over to this side here, whoop, fixed cost minus the gross profit for a single product equals our units. And that will work. Let's go ahead and uh, try this. So fixed cost divided by open parentheses unit price or sale price minus our variable cost. And now that's in uh, units. And I don't want, there's a couple problems with this. Let me apply some general formatting to show you one of the problems. The decimal keeps on going. And we're actually going to make a label, a formula that makes a label based on that so we can have it explicitly on our chart. Break-even point is this number. That unrounded number won't work in a label formula. So we're going to actually have to officially round this. And by the way, if you're just learning Excel, if you go like this, that does not remove the decimals. That unformatted long extended decimal is still there and will show up in any formula. So I'm going to put this into edit mode, and I'm going to officially round it using the round function. Round function will take a number, comma, and number of digits. We're rounding to the integer, which means 0. If we were rounding to the penny, you go two positions to the right, and you'd put a 2. But we're going to the integer, so we put a 0. So it says approximately uh, 2, 6, 7 units. Now I'm going to decrease the decimals. Now. Now that we calculate this, break even is fine. Now, what do we know about break even? Over here, we know at whatever the point is, let's see. I think I had this at 45 originally. All right, so we do have an exact zero there. At exactly break even, oh yeah, sales are equal to total cost, because the definition of break even is that there's zero profit. So of course, we can take either this number of units times and calculate our total cost, but it'd be much easier just to do sales. So I'm going to say the actual break-even units times our sale price. And we can see we have our two values from here, and those are our two x and y values we can plot. Now, we do want to do a label, because sometimes it may not be exactly right on off a few dollars or pennies. So we want a label that says break-even units is approximately so many units. So we're going to create a text formula. Now, formulas, when you have text, you have to put the text in double quotes. And now I'm going to abbreviate, and you can put whatever label you want here, break-even units. The, the label will show up here in the legend, so it can't be too long. Break-even units, and I'm going to put approximately equal to I'm going to spell check. Notice I hit F7 to spell check. I'm such a bad speller. So right now we have text in a formula. Maybe I should scroll up here. I'm going to enter this just for a moment and drag this over here. 
we need the, to join this to this number here. So it, every time this number changes or any of our inputs changes and this changes, our label will change. We need to join this text string to that. And the join symbol is Shift 7, the ampersand. And then I'm going to click right there. If we hadn't used the round, then all of these you know, 15 significant digits would show up there and it'd be a mess. All right, so there we have our break even in units approximately equal to 400. Now we can plot x, y, and a series name that will show up in the legend. I'm going to click up here. There's a few ways we can do this. I'm going to go to with the chart selected, design, select data, go down to add. This is done in step two of Chart Wizard in earlier versions. Series name, boom, there it is. You can already see before we hit tab, it's showing up as series four there. But as soon as we click there, we have our label. X is that. Very important when you get down to Y's that you highlight that array and delete it. Because sometimes if you don't, it'll actually stick and mess up your formula here. Our label, units, uh, value there isn't showing up next. But when we click OK, now we have our new value. We click OK. And sure enough, it is going to plot. Oops, what? I don't see it anywhere. What's going on? We got this. When you plot it, it's sometimes hard to see. And sometimes you can get lucky and click around. There's two ways to select a data series. I'm going to use my arrow keys, up, down, arrows. Oh, I can see I got it. Sometimes you have to do left, right. It looks like I got it right there. The other way is if you're having a hard time selecting, you can just go to Layout. And then over here, you can do the drop down and select. Oh, and there it is. BECU approximately 400. There it is. Now, once we have it selected, we can Control-1. That's Format Cells. And I'm going to say F Marker Options, built in. And I'm going to make it pretty big. And then click Close. And now we have a little. Oh, then maybe that's too big, right? Control-1. Change the color, whatever you want. Totally amazing dynamic chart. Let's just try this. I'm going to make the unit increment 100. And sure enough, it totally updates the lines, that, all of our formulas, everything. Notice, <laughs> beautiful. The units change, and all, everything changes. Change this to 50. It's just like magic. That is a break-even analysis where we saw how to put our assumptions or formula inputs into cells so that it's easy to change them, build our formulas, including our units, uh, all the data for the chart, plotting it using XY scatter, and even building some formulas, uh, text formula for our label so we can plot the break-even point. All right, see you next video.